Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session in dentistry and more. Today's session is about dentine, so we'll be covering this under a few sessions. So the first session is about dentine, uh, its formation, its structure and uh, little details about the dentinal tubules. And second part is about various types of dentine. And the last session we'll be covering about the theories relating uh, the dentine uh, transmission of nerve impulses so let's see uh, one by one so dentine uh, as we all know it is uh, a tooth layer basically the second layer of tooth uh, which provides the bulk and general form of the tooth and it begins to form slightly before the enamel and it determines the shape of crown including the cusp and ridges and also the number and size of the roots so let's get into the details of dentine so dentine the heart structure of tooth just like enamel which is physically and chemically it closely resembles bone and it is said to be a living tissue then enamel is not a living tissue it is mostly uh, a vascular a cellular but dentine is living tissue since the tubules present in it contains processes of specialized cell which are odontoblast okay so odontoblast so since it has odontoblast which is known as living tissue we can say that it is a living tissue unlike enamel so main morphologic difference between bone and dentine is that some of the osteoblast osteoblasts are the bone cells exist on the surface of the bone and when one of the cells become enclosed within its matrix it is called an osteocyte okay but the odontoblast cell bodies remain external to dentine okay but their processes exist within the tubules in dentine but the cell bodies remain external to dentine the osteocyte is not there in odontoblast there is no odontocyte in osteocyte it is nothing but when the cell becomes enclosed within its matrix okay but these odontoblast cell bodies remain external to dentine that is the basic difference between bone and uh, dentine or we can say osteoblast and odontoblast we have uh, osteocyte uh, in bone which is enclosed within the matrix and uh, stages of tooth development we have uh, studied in detail the stages of tooth development in enamel it's almost same nothing is different only thing is the odontoblast which is giving rise to dentine first the inner enamel epithelium it influences the pulp to differentiate the odontoblast to form the first layer of dentine then dentine forms when dentine forms it in turn differentiate the ameloblast the inner enamel epithelium into ameloblast so once this dentine predentine is formed the nutritional supply to the inner enamel epithelium is cut and the nutrition will be taken from the dental sac so this is the dentine which forms predentine forms so it forms in the coronal part and even the dent uh, root part so we have two types of dentine the coronal dentine and root dentine and this is a cervical loop so there will be proliferation at this area this will result in a uh, root formation and uh, this is giving rise to hardwick's epithelial root sheath so all this we have covered in detail in the development of tooth and also in enamel uh, chapter so coronal part i have mentioned in enamel chapter in detail so the um, root tendon um, when the root formation proceeds the epithelial cells from the epi the cervical loop which proliferates apically and influences the differentiation of odontoblast from the dental papillae as well as cementoblast from the follicle okay this is a follicle this is dental papillae 
so it differentiate the dental papillae to form the root dentin and it will differentiate the cells from the dental sac to form cementum so there will be deposition of root dentin and cementum so that is about uh, formation of odontoblast or dentin so the structure of dentin basically the dentinal matrix of collagen fibers are arranged in network so it is arranged in a network and as this dentin calcifies calcifies the hydroxy apatite crystal mass the collagen fibers so the bodies of odontoblast they are arranged in layer on the pulpal surface of the dentin okay so bodies are arranged in so these are arranged this is a pulpal surface so this is a pulp this red color so bodies are arranged this is a pulpal surface okay this is a pulpal surface so the body the odontoblast odontoblast will be like with a projection and will be like this so this is a tail and this is a head part so the bodies of odontoblast arranged in a layer on the pulpal surface so this will be arranged in the layer on the pulpal surface on the dentin and only their cytoplasmic processes are included in the tubules in the mineral matrix okay so each cell give rise to one process which traverses the pre-dentin and calcified dentin within one tubule and terminates in a branching network to the DEJ or CEJ so it goes starts from the pulpal surface and it terminates here this is the enamel the outermost covering and it's it terminates at the DEJ or CEJ which is the root portion where cementum and dentin meets which is known as cemento dentinal junction in crown it meets with enamel which is known as dentino enamel junction okay now let's learn something about dentinal tubules which is basically the course of these tubules follow a gentle curve okay so the gentle curve so it is a uh, double curvature and uh, this is known as uh, S-shaped curve. So we have a S-shaped curve. This is like this S-shaped curve, and uh, it starts at right angle at the pulpal surface. Okay, so this is a pulpal surface. It starts at right angle to the pulpal surface, just like uh, enamel. It starts from right angle to the dentinal surface. So it starts right angle at the pulpal surface, and first convexity of this doubly curved course is directed towards the apex of tooth okay so it will be like this so the first convexity towards the apex okay this is the first convexity and this is the second convexity so first convexity towards the apex of tooth so, and these tubules are perpendicular to DEJ and CEJ okay so DEJ will be on the crown and CEJ C uh, not CEJ C DJ that is cemento dentinal junction this will be in root and dj will be in crown and this is double curvature double convex and it has a shaped uh, pattern so dentinal tubules are almost straight near the root tip at the root tip which will be almost straight and also straight at the incisal edges and cusps so dentin thickness ranges from 3 to 10 millimeter and the ratio between outer to inner dentin has 5 is to 1 that is outer has 5 tubules compared to the inner tubules the ratio between outer to inner number of tubules is 5 to 1 the more tubules are present in the outer portion of dentin that is which is closer to the enamel and number of tubules Per square millimeter varies from 15,000 at DEJ but the number of tubules is lesser at DEJ and more at pulp that is around 15,000 at DEJ but 65,000 near the pulp surface so 5 is to 1 was the outer and inner dentinal surface ratio okay 5 is to 1 but this is number of tubules per square millimeter so number of tubules per square millimeter is very low or less than uh, 50,000 or around 15,000 at DEJ but it is 65,000 at pulp whereas 
the outer and inner surface of dentine is about 5 is to 1 okay so outer dentine is 5 with respect to um, inner dentine 5 times uh, bigger outer dentine compared to the inner dentine and next we have uh, dentinal tubules and it has lateral branches throughout the dentine which is termed as canaliculi or microtubules and this enamel spindle we have learned in uh, chapter enamel that is the odontoblast process okay so the odontoblastic processes which uh, extends through the DJ into enamel several millimeters which is known as enamel spindle actually enamel spindle is not an enamel structure which is actually odontoblastic that is a related dentin which which transverse or which enter into this DEJ for few millimeter and it terminates in enamel that is why it is known as enamel spindle this is the odontoblast which extends from DEJ extends through DEJ into enamel okay so that is known as enamel spindle so next we have uh, various types of dentin uh, in next session we will be learning about types of dentin such as peritubular dentin, intertubular dentin, um, free dentin uh, and odontoblastic processes, uh, primary dentin, secondary dentin, tertiary dentin. So all will be dealt in next session. Okay. Thank you. Hello everyone, let's continue our dentine sessions. So today's video is about types of uh, dentine. Uh, so I'll be explaining all the types using this picture and we have some uh, special features of dentine such as incremental lines of von Ebner's lines and contour lines of oven and Tom's granular layer. So let's get into details of all the types of dentine and other features. So let's start with peritubular dentine. So all these questions are very very important because these are commonly asked short notes uh, in university exam. So let it be peritubular dentine, intertubular, pre-dentine, odontoblastic process, primary dentine, secondary dentine, tertiary dentine, mantle dentine, circumpulpal dentine, interglobular dentine. And we have contour lines of Owen, Von Ebner's lines and Tom's granular layer. So all are short notes and uh, it's quite easy to understand uh, from this picture. So always try to understand the concept with a picture in your mind. So it will be easy to reproduce the same into your answer sheets. So let's start with peritubular dentine. So peritubular dentine, the dentine that immediately surrounds the dentinal tubules. So hope you can see this brown color which immediately surrounds. This is the dentinal tubule and this is the odontoblast. This is the dentinal tubule, odontoblastic. The processes and the tube the dentine which is immediately surrounds the dentinal tubules this brown color dentine is known as peritubular dentine which is highly mineralized than the intertubular dentine okay intertubular dentine is between the tubules as the name suggests it is between the tubules it is more mineralized than the intertubular dentine and it is twice as thick in the outer dentine than the inner dentine and this calcified tubules wall has an inner organic lining which is known as lamina limitans okay lamina limitans which is the lamina limitans which is the inner organic lining of peritubular dentine calcified tubule okay so that is peritubular dentine now we have the second one that is intertubular dentine. So intertubular dentine 
which is located between the dentinal tubules okay so between the dentinal tubules we have intertubular dentin which is less mineralized than the peritubular dentin which is just uh, adjacent or just surrounding the tubules so one half of its uh, volume is organic matrix especially collagen fibers and this is seen between the zones of peritubular dentin so we know we have peritubular dentin here and here this is just two odontoblastic processes we have many odontoblastic process so between peritubular dentin we have odontoblastic uh, sorry intertubular dentin this violet uh, color i have mentioned the interglobular mm, sorry intertubular dentin lots of confusing dentin is there so i am talking about intertubular dentin which is between the peritubular dentin okay and the fibrils the collagen fibrils ranges from 0.5 to 0.2 micrometer in diameter so hydroxyapatite crystals are formed along the fibers with their long axis oriented parallel to the collagen fibers so that's how hydroxyapatite crystals are formed through this fibers so it is uh, well mineralized but not uh, up to uh, peritubular dentin and it provides tensile strength to uh, strength to dentin that is its uh, function now we have pre-dentin okay so next is pre-dentin this is pre-dentin so we finished peritubular dentin and intertubular dentin now we have pre-dentin pre-dentin we know which is the first dentin to be formed which is located adjacent to pulp where the dental papilla or the future pulp will be uh, giving rise to the first layer of dentin which is known as pre-dentin and which is not mineralized and these the collagen fibers which undergo mineralization at the pre-dentin and the pre-dentin then becomes dentin and a new layer of pre-dentin forms circumpulpally okay so pre-dentin once it is mineralized it becomes dentin and then at the same time there will be new layer of dentin that is pre-dentin will be formed so pre-dentin is not mineralized one it is a first formed dentin which is adjacent to dental pulp okay so that is pre-dentin now we have odontoblastic processes so odontoblastic process is the cytoplasmic extension of odontoblast this is the odontoblastic process so we know odontoblastic process which is entering into enamel which was known as enamel spindle hope you remember what is enamel spindle so enamel spindle is odontoblastic process which cross the dej and which end up in enamel so this is enamel part okay it's because this is dj so that is enamel spindle we learned uh, in last session and lamina limitans was a organic layer of peritubular dentin so the odontoblast which resides in the peripheral pulp at the pulp pre-dentin border and their process extends into dentinal tubules okay so the process extends into dentinal tubule these odontoblasts reside in the peripheral pulp at pulp pre-dentin border so we have pulp here so hope you can understand the concept we have pulp here this is the pulp okay this is enamel this portion is enamel so odontoblast is between pulp and pre-dentin border and this process is cytoplasmic extension and the process are largest in diameter near the pulp here it is the largest and it goes thinner as it moves towards the dentin and the cell bodies are 7 micrometer in diameter and 40 micrometer in length so that was about odontoblastic process the next one is primary dentin which is uh, dentin that is formed prior to eruption of tooth and which is secreted at relatively higher rate and which constitute major part of dentin in the tooth and mandible dentin is the first formed dentin in the crown underlying DEJ that is dentino enamel junction which is regular in structure dentin tubules form S shaped as a result of directional movement of odontoblast 
uh, whereas the circum pulpal dentine forms the remaining primary dentine or bulk of the tooth okay so mantle dentine and um, circum pulpal dentine so the fibrils are much smaller in diameter and are more closely packed together and the slightly more mineral content than in mantle dentine for circum pulpal dentine okay so whereas a secondary dentine secondary dentine is formed after root completion and uh, there is narrow band of dentine bordering the pulp which contain fewer tubules than primary dentine and there is usually a bend in the tubules where the primary and secondary dentine interface so since it is formed after eruption the odontoblast slightly change directions which contributes to the bending of dentinal tubules so primary dentine is before primary dentine is uh, uh, before the eruption of tooth whereas the secondary dentine after completion of root okay now we have tertiary dentine tertiary dentine is what uh, we are inducing dentine formation when there is a pathological uh, cavity which is very close to pulp where the normal restoration is not possible so what we do is we place a medicament on the uh, dentine surface which is very close to uh, pulp so after two or three weeks there will be dentine formation which we are inducing from the underlying pulp the mesenchymal cells which induce cells the cells of um, this mesenchymal cells which produces odontoblast and dentine and there will be a layer of dentine formed a new dentine formed which uh, seals off or which keep a boundary uh, between the outer surface from the pulp so such type of dentine is known as tertiary or reparative dentine okay so when pathologic process or operative procedures when these odontoblasts are cut uh, these undergo uh, survival or sometimes these odontoblasts will die depending upon the extent of injury so if they survive this dentine is produced which is known as reactionary or regenerated dentine so killed odontoblasts are replaced by migration of undifferentiated, undifferentiated cells arising in the deeper layer of pulp to the dentine interface so newly differentiated odontoblasts then begin deposition of reparative dentine to seal of the zone of injury as a healing process initiated by pulp so there will be sealing of the injury so that is why it is known as reparative dentine and now we have mantle dentine okay so already we have seen mantle dentine it is the first layer of primary dentine to be deposited and which is that is why it is the oldest dentine and produced adjacent to enamel in the crown which can be recognized by characteristic thick fan shaped collagen fibers and these fibers run perpendicular to DEJ okay whereas a circum pulpal dentine which is formed after the layer of mantle dentine has been deposited and which constitute major part of primary and secondary dentine the hydroxy apatite crystals are deposited on the surface within the fibrils and continue to grow as mineralization proceeds which results in increased mineral content of dentine now we have incremental lines of von ebner so the incremental lines of von ebner or imbrications line appear as fine lines or striations in dentine so similar lines we have seen in enamel which are they the incremental lines of red cs okay so the similar line in dentine is known as von ebner's line so these lines reflect the daily rhythmic recurrent deposition of dentine matrix as well as the hesitation and the daily formative process so this is the incremental lines the deposition when this mineralization happens there will be minerals deposited as additive method it cannot uh, grow itself there should be com continuous addition of minerals so uh, those lines is known as von ebner's line so this is in the dentine whereas in incremental lines of uh, red cs in enamel okay 
so the course of these lines indicate the growth pattern of dentin and some of these incremental lines are accentuated because of the disturbance in the matrix and remineralization process such lines are known as contour lines of owen so these lines represent hypocalcified bands so why it is uh, different from von ebner's this is a accentuated uh, accentuated uh, because of the disturbance in the matrix and remineralization process so accentuated incremental lines are known as contour lines of owen and we have another structure uh, which is neonatal line where this is seen the deciduous teeth when the first permanent molar the prenatal and postnatal dentin is separated by an accentuated contour line which is known as neonatal line okay so with that we have seen in dentin also when the separation between the prenatal and postnatal enamel the similarly prenatal and postnatal dentin is separated by neonatal line this line reflects the abrupt change in environment that occurs at birth okay so the dentin matrix formed prior to birth is usually better quality than that formed after birth and now we have interglobular dentin okay interglobular dentin so before we have seen intertubular dentin now we have interglobular dentin so interglobular dentin sometimes mineralization of dentin begins in small globular areas that fail to fuse into homogeneous mass so this results in zone of hypomineralization between the globules so these zones are called as interglobular dentin which is forms in crowns of teeth in the circumpalpal dentin just below the mandible dentin okay just below the mandible dentin we can see interglobular dentin so this is circumpalpal dentin this is the mandible dentin just below the mandible dentin uh we can see uh in circumpalpal dentin the interglobular dentin which is seen just below mandible dentin next we have tom's granular layer which is different from tom's process tom's process was seen in enamel formation the ameloblastic uh processes which is involved in the production of tooth enamel but this is tom's granular layer so there is a zone which is adjacent to cementum that appears granular okay so near to cementum okay so when in the root dentin when it is near to cementum we have a granular layer which is known as tom's granular layer which is slightly increases in amount from cemento enamel junction to the root apex okay so it changes it increases from uh cemento enamel junction from uh uh the cj to root apex it is caused by coalescing and looping of the terminal portions of terminal portions of dentinal tubules that is tom's granular layer don't get confused tom's process in enamel tom's granular layer in dentin so that is all about uh various structures various types of dentin so we have covered peritubular dentin which is adjacent to tubules intertubular dentin between the peritubular dentin predentin which is a uh, first formed dentin and odontoblastic process which is cytoplasmic extension primary dentin and secondary dentin which is the mandible dentin secondary dentin and the tertiary dentin which is the reparatory dentin on process pathological or operative procedures mandible and circumpalpal dentin mandible mandible dentin is adjacent to dj and the remaining portion is the circumpalpal dentin because it has uh, towards the pulpal side okay and interglobular dentin and we have incremental lines which is similar to incremental lines of rhexias in enamel contour lines of owen which is accentuated lines of incremental lines and tom's granular layer which is adjacent to cementum there will be a granular layer so that's all about uh, the various types of dentin next we have a few theories uh, of uh, 
the innovation of dentine and some of the physical and chemical properties and innovation part of dentine uh, i'll come up with so i'll come up with innovations and physical and other properties of dentine in my next video thank you hello everyone let's continue our sessions in dentine so this third part will be covering uh, more about physical and chemical uh, properties and organic and inorganic content of dentine and the innovation various theories of innovation and the functional changes that is age and functional changes which are uh, detracts uh, sclerotic or transparent dentine and affected and infected dentine so let's see the details of these theories, innovation and functional changes. Dentine is light yellowish in color and it becomes darker with age which is harder than bone but considerably softer than enamel which has uh, lower content of mineral salts um, which renders it more radiolucent than enamel okay radiolucent it appears more blacker okay radio opaque means more whiter in radiography so it appears more radiolucent than enamel because of the lower content of mineral salt now uh, it is a chemical composition which has 70 percentage of inorganic content whereas in enamel it was 96 percentage and the 20 percentage is organic matter and the remaining 10 percentage is water in organic substance it has basically type 1 collagenous fibers and a minor amount of type 5 collagenous fibers non collagenous proteins includes dentine phosphoproteins dentine matrix protein dentine siloprotein bone siloprotein osteopontin osteocalcin etc and other proteoglycans phospholipids and some of the growth factors in organic substance basically calcium hydroxyapatite crystals so type 1 collagen is a principal type of collagen found in dentine and inorganic crystals are plate shaped and are much similar than hydroxy appetite crystals in enamel and dentine also contains small amounts of phosphates carbonates and sulfonates okay now we are moving on to the innovation part so this is a part of dentine which has no endings so nerve fibers were shown to accompany 30 to 70 percentage of the odontoblastic processes and these are referred to as intratubular nerves so it has intratubular nerves so which uh, carries the sensation okay so intratubular nerves so these nerves and the terminals are found in close association with odontoblast process within the tubule so we have various theories of pain transmission through dentine so this is the theories of pain transmission the first one is direct neural stimulation transduction theory modulation theory gate control or vibration theory and hydrodynamic theory so let's see one by one the first one is direct neural stimulation this is according to which nerves in the dentine get stimulated but the main drawbacks is the nerves in dentine tubules are not commonly seen and even if they are present they do not extend beyond the inner dentine so topical application of local anesthetic agents do not abolish sensitivity hence this theory is not accepted okay so Mm, the direct neural stimulation is not a uh, well accepted theory as per, the as per this theory they say the nerves are present on the dentine so if if it is present on the dentine 
that topical application of local anesthetic agents should abolish sensitivity but it is not happening so it is not well accepted next one is transduction theory which is the odontoblast process is the primary structure excited by the stimulus this is the odontoblastic process and that the impulse is transmitted to the nerve endings in inner dentine okay so drawbacks is the non-neurotransmitter vesicles in the odontoblast process to facilitate the synapse or synaptic specialization so according to transduction theory there is no uh, presence of any type of neurotransmitter vesicles in the odontoblast so that theory also not well accepted now we have the third theory that is modulation theory so according to which nerve impulses in the pulp are modulated through the liberation of polypeptides from the odontoblast when injury or something happens so these substances may selectively alter the permeability of odontoblastic cell membrane through hyperpolarization so that the pulp neurons are more prone to discharge upon receipt of subsequent stimuli that is a modulation theory when it gets modulated okay uh, that is also not well accepted the next one is gate control or vibration theory this theory states that the pain is a function of balance between information traveling into the spinal cord through large nerve fiber and information traveling through small nerve fiber so large nerve fiber carry non nociceptive information and small fibers carries nociceptive information okay that is a gate control or vibration theory it is between the large and small nerve fibers so according to this theory a beta fibers which transmit information from vibration receptors which stimulate inhibitory neurons in the spinal cord which in turn act to reduce the amount of pain signal transmitted from a delta and c fibers across the midline of spinal cord and from there to brain that is a gate control vibration it is basically the types of fibers it is highlighting a beta a delta and c fibers so whereas the modulation is different one modulation is the permeability change in autodromblastic cell membrane by hyperpolarization transduction is different one it is uh, autodromblast process which is excited by the stimulus and the last one which is the most accepted theory which is the hydrodynamic theory so various stimuli such as heat cold air blast or mechanical or osmotic pressure which affects the fluid movements in the dentinal tubules okay so hydrodynamics so hydro means water dynamics is change so the fluid movements is the uh, most accepted concept of uh, pain transmission so this is a fluid movement either inward or outward stimulate the pain mechanism in the tubules by mechanical disturbance of the nerve closely associated with odontoblast and its process so it is all about movement of the fluid inward and outward the odontoblastic process so these endings may act as a mechanoreceptors as they are affected by mechanical displacement of tubular fluid so this is all highlighting about the movement of fluid and it is the most accepted one okay so uh, age and functional changes we are moving to the last part which is age and functional changes so the vitality of dentin uh due to physiological and pathological stimuli there will be uh, always uh, change in vitality of dentin and secondary dentin will be continuously uh, deposited um, in the pulpal layer as the dentin is removed so re removed by the changes in such as uh, dental caries abrasion attrition and such process there will be uh, formation of Mm, structures like dead tracts sclerosis and uh, in addition to the uh, secondary dentine or reparative dentine okay so mm, uh, reparative dentine we already seen in uh, our session 2 now let's see what is dead tracts 
So Detrax is nothing but odontoblastic processes which disintegrate and empty tubules are filled with air. So it disintegrates and it fills with air. Okay. So the, it looks like uh, black or dead tracks which is very black in color when transmitted light and white in reflected light. Okay. So the tracks appear as black in transmitted light and white in reflected light. So this degeneration is often observed in areas of narrow pulp horn because of crowding of odontoblast. And these empty areas demonstrate decreased sensitivity. And the tracks are probably the initial step in the formation of sclerotic dentin. Okay, so this is the tract which is giving sclerotic or transparent dentin. The sclerotic or transparent dentin when caries, attrition, abrasion, erosion or cavity preparation causes collagen fibers and appetite crystals to begin appear in the dentinal tubules. So this blocking of tubules may be considered as a defensive reaction of dentin. So these appetite crystals are initially only sporadic in dentinal tubule but gradually fill it with a fine meshwork of crystals. So that is transparent dentin. So as this continues, the tubule lumen is obliterated with minerals which appears very much like peritubular dentin. It looks like peritubular dentin. So the refractive indices of dentin in such areas become transparent and transparent in transmitted and dark in reflected light. So there is decreased permeability of dentin. Okay, so that is why these uh, caries, attrition, abrasion, in such cases, the collagen fibers and uh, appetite crystals to begin appear in the dentinal tubules. So the den dentinal tubules will be blocked and the refractive index of this uh, dentin will be similar as the adjacent uh, peritubular dentin and uh, it will look like transparent and uh, and transmitted and dark and reflected light so the last one is affected and infected dentin so the infected dentin is that part of dentin which is contaminated and contains microorganisms and the toxins and demineralized dentin whereas the affected dentin is not occupied by microorganism it just contains the toxins produced by microorganism of infected dentin and also there is demineralization okay so the collagen fibers are denatured de uh, natured in infected dentin while in affected dentin the collagen fibers demonstrated cross banding and is physiologically remineralizable so that's all about dentin we have finished uh, dentin mm. so we have finished in three sessions the first one part was the basic dentin uh, formation and the second part was various structures and the third part we mainly focused on the theories of innovation okay so the lots of questions will be asked lots of short notes we have seen primary dentine secondary dentine tertiary dentine uh, then the one of uh, lines then uh, we have dead tracks sclerotic or transparent dentine uh, oven lines of oven and the mandel dentin, circumpalpal dentin, peritubular, intertubular, interglobular dentin, pre-dentin. So everything might be asked as short note. So I'll come up with pulp in my next uh, session. Thank you.